Kansas City Chiefs General Manager Brett Veach has been on the record saying that the battle for the third running back on the Kansas City Chiefs roster will be an open competition. Personally, I'm not convinced that the battle for backup running back is not an open competition, but Brett Veach has not intimated as much. So obviously, Isaiah Pacheco is the starter for the Kansas City Chiefs. Clyde edwards Elaire is ostensibly that number two guy, leaving the battle for the number three running back on the Kansas City Chiefs to come down to Keontae Ingram, LaMichael P. Ryan, Hassan Hall, often forgotten about, Daenerys Prince fan favorite, Louis Reese Zemit, the European, as well as recent UDFAs, Imani Bailey, and the subject of today's video, Carson Steele, a man that has one of the greatest names for a 1970s action star slash game show host that I have ever heard, but also a guy that I thought I was under the impression, had come out of college a year before because kind of his final season in college was a drop-off from his previous season. But that previous season was definitely good enough to land him in the NFL. So this video will have three separate parts outside of this introduction. There will be a who portion where we discuss who is Carson Steele, a Stre pardon me, a strengths section, I forgot exactly what I was doing, where we talk about the strengths and weaknesses of Carson Steele as a prospect, and finally, an analysis part where we talk about what I think might happen this season with Carson Steele and the Kansas City Chiefs. This video is the 16th video in a playlist on the channel called 2024 NFL Draft Picks, where I have done a video like this for all of the Kansas City Chiefs draft picks as well as many of the UDFA, and there are several UDFA, still on the list of people to get their own videos. So who is Carson Steele? Well, the running back is six feet tall, which is in the 76th percentile for running backs. He weighs 228 pounds, which is in the 86th percentile for running backs. He had a 40-yard dash time of 4.75. Now, you will find on the internet basically anywhere you decide to look for a listed 40 time for Carson Steele, a 40-yard dash of 4.50. I could not find a source for that. Anywhere, but apparently at the pro day for UCLA this past season, he ran that 475. That is a bad 40 yard dash. However, the vertical leap of 37.5 is a good number. And the only other numbers that I could find for Carson Steele are a 405 pound bench press and a 615 pound squat. Those are numbers that come to us. From the Feldman's Freaks list, however, and if you are familiar with that, a lot of that list is hype. A lot of that list is maybe rumor or speculation. I, I don't really know. Uh, I, I really like the list, and I like looking at the players and their, their numbers, but one thing that you will notice if you, if you pay enough attention to it is rarely do those numbers end up checking out with the actual testing numbers. But I will say that with a guy who is constructed as Carson Steele is constructed, a 405-pound bench is not something that seems otherworldly. He does have that type of build, and the 615-pound squat is something that definitely seems realistic as well. So while he does not have elite speed, he does look to have elite type size and strength. Now, if you look over there at the production numbers, 2021 and 2022, Carson Steele played for Ball State. And then in 2023, he became a UCLA Bruin. 
So as a freshman in 2021, he had 192 carries to go with 891 yards of production, as well as six touchdowns. That is good for a 4.6 yard average on the ground. He added 12 receptions for 157 yards and a touchdown. That is good for a 13.1 yard per reception total. As a sophomore in 2022, he had 289 carries for 1,556 yards and 14 touchdowns. That is good for a 5.4 yard average. He added 29 receptions for 166 yards, which is only a 5.7 yard average, but he did add a touchdown through the air as well, stating perhaps that he became the focal point of that offense, right? If you're adding, if you're, if you're jumping from 12 receptions as a freshman to 29 as a sophomore, that is a pretty big sign that they trust you uh, to do what it is that needs to be done on the field. And then in 2023, he transferred to UCLA, where he had only 167 carries, which is the low point for his three years in college, 847 yards with six touchdowns, a 5.1 yard average, and he added through the air 17 receptions, 163 yards, a more healthy 9.6 yard average on those receptions and two touchdowns. So I think essentially what you're getting out of these numbers plus the production is that Carson Steele is a power back who adds the ability to catch the ball out of the backfield. That's something the Kansas City Chiefs have not really had since Kareem Hunt. Now, he's not Kareem Hunt. I'm just throwing that out there. By the way, Kareem Hunt ran a slow 40 time as well. Not quite as slow as Carson Steele, a 4.62. But you remember distinctly, I'm sure you do, Kareem Hunt outrunning any number of players on the football field for the Kansas City Chiefs. When we start looking at strengths and weaknesses on the field for Carson Steele, one of the things that definitely sticks out is his open field running ability. If I were to have a criticism of Isaiah Pacheco for the Kansas City Chiefs, one thing that might be is he doesn't kind of know what to do when he hits the open field. Now, I think that this is something that happens to running backs. If you go back and watch Isaiah Pacheco at Rutgers, he was not working with a whole lot as far as his team was concerned. And I think that the ability to work in the open field is something that a running back gets used to or kind of closes off. Isaiah Pacheco has all the speed in the world, and he hits the hole with acceleration, but even then, we haven't seen him break off a whole lot of runs into the open field. Carson Steele, while he does not have that speed, he does know how to run in the open field. Now, a lot of this, it comes down kind of seemingly to vision, right? You are calculating how you need to move based on all of the other players upfield. Carson Steele is very good with that part of the game, and he also has answers when those players get there. It is strange to watch him sort of I don't know how you would say half cock a stiff arm, right? The, the way that you would cock a gun or half cock a gun, he will do that with a stiff arm and decide not to throw it until later in the run. That is, a, that is an open field type of technique I don't know that I have ever seen before, uh, but when you have the strength behind that stiff arm that does Carson Steele, it is something that ends up working to his advantage when that stiff arm is thrown out there. A and again, along that line, strength for Carson Steele, he is a solidly built running back. The guy is muscle top to bottom, and he shows it on the football field. He is not afraid to put his face mask between somebody's numbers and just see if he can win that way. Which is probably a good thing for Carson Steele because he's not going to be beating many players to the corner in the NFL. He is 
good at combining this open field ability with his strength in the fact that he can take the ball from the quarterback and decide where the best avenue is for him to get minimal contact, but contact that he can run through. He does not avoid contact. He is I, I don't know that I would call him necessarily a one-cut runner. It's more of a bend-and-run type attempt. He takes a lot of unique angles that allows him to be the one to initiate contact and then use his strength to win. Along those lines, his balance is really, really good. I hate to throw the name back out there, but not quite. Kareem Hunt, Weeble, Wobble, but don't fall down. But I would say certainly closer to that than he is to Isaiah Pacheco's style of running. Isaiah Pacheco sometimes, you'll see him get so far behind his pads, running so hard and so fast, that he ends up sort of just turtling on the ground. Someone will hit him from an odd angle, and he'll just be on his back still spinning his legs. You know what I'm talking about. Carson Steele is a little bit smoother than that. Weaknesses, obviously, number one is his speed. Uh, However, much like Kareem Hunt, um, you don't necessarily see him as a slow player on the field. It's obvious that he doesn't have quite breakaway speed, but he does never look, he doesn't ever look as if he is really struggling to outpace players. You will see him get caught, but not really from behind, from behind. The number two weakness there is production, and I know it's, how do you say that about a guy who had a 1,556-yard season, adding 166 through the air for 15 total touchdowns? That's not what I mean. Certainly, he was plenty productive in college, but when you go from, in 2022, running for 1,556 yards and 14 touchdowns with 166 through the air and a receiving touchdown, looking like a man amongst boys while playing in the MAC. Then you transfer to UCLA where you're in the Pac-12, and that falls all the way down to 167 carries, getting only 58% of the carries that you had the previous year and ending up with around 50% of the yards and less than 50% of the touchdowns, one has to wonder whether your production against that MAC competition was just you outclassing the rest of the athletes on the field. And once he got to the Pac-12 type competition, he was no longer a bully. And the final weakness that I will point out is agility. He is a very stiff runner. He is a very stiff athlete. Now, this might contribute to some of his balance, but when you watch him on the field, there is not a whole lot of wiggle to him. Now, he doesn't try to deploy it, right? He does not try to juke players out. He does not try to east and west his way to the north and south end zone. What he does is take the ball, pick an angle, and run. So that's, that's at least he, no, he seems to know his limitations in that department. When we start looking at strengths and weaknesses on the field for Carson Steele, one of the things that definitely sticks out is his open field running ability. If I were to have a criticism of Isaiah Pacheco for the Kansas City Chiefs, one thing that might be is he doesn't kind of know what to do when he hits the open field. Now, I think that this is something that happens to running backs. If you go back and watch Isaiah Pacheco at Rutgers, he was not working with a whole lot as far as his team was concerned. And I think that the ability to work in the open field is something that a running back gets used to or kind of closes off. Isaiah Pacheco has all the speed in the world, and he hits the hole with acceleration, but even then, we haven't seen him break off a whole lot of runs into the open field. Carson Steele, while he does not have that speed, he does know how to run in the open field. Now, a lot of this, it comes down kind of seemingly to vision, right? You are calculating how you need to move based on all of the other players upfield. 
Carson Steele is very good with that part of the game, and he also has answers when those players get there. It is strange to watch him sort of, I don't know how you would say, half cock a stiff arm, right? The, the way that you would cock a gun or half cock a gun, he will do that with a stiff arm and decide not to throw it until later in the run. That is, a, that is an open field type of technique I don't know that I have ever seen before, uh, but when you have the strength behind that stiff arm that does Carson Steele, it is something that ends up working to his advantage when that stiff arm is thrown out there. A and again, along that line, strength for Carson Steele, he is a solidly built running back. The guy is muscle top to bottom, and he shows it on the football field. He is not afraid to put his face mask between somebody's numbers and just see if he can win that way, which is probably a good thing for Carson Steele because he's not going to be beating many players to the corner in the NFL. He is good at combining this open field ability with his strength in the fact that he can take the ball from the quarterback and decide where the best avenue is for him to get minimal contact, but contact that he can run through. He does not avoid contact. He is I, I don't know that I would call him necessarily a one-cut runner. It's more of a bend-and-run type attempt. He takes a lot of unique angles that allows him to be the one to initiate contact and then use his strength to win. Along those lines, his balance is really, really good. I hate to throw the name back out there, but not quite. Kareem Hunt, Weeble, Wobble, but don't fall down. But I would say certainly closer to that than he is to Isaiah Pacheco's style of running. Isaiah Pacheco sometimes... You'll see him get so far behind his pads, running so hard and so fast, that he ends up sort of just turtling on the ground. Someone will hit him from an odd angle, and he'll just be on his back still spinning his legs. You know what I'm talking about. Carson Steele is a little bit smoother than that. Weaknesses, obviously, number one is his speed. Uh, however, much like Kareem Hunt... Um, you don't necessarily see him as a slow player on the field. It's obvious that he doesn't have quite breakaway speed, but he does never look he doesn't ever look as if he is really struggling to outpace players. You will see him get caught, but not really from behind from behind. The number two weakness there is production, and I know it's how do you say that about a guy who had a 1,556 yard season, adding 166 through the air for 15 total touchdowns? That's not what I mean. Certainly, he was plenty productive in college. But when you go from in 2022 running for 1,556 yards and 14 touchdowns with 166 through the air and a receiving touchdown, looking like a man amongst boys while playing in the MAC, then you transfer to UCLA where you're in the Pac-12, and that falls all the way down to 167 carries, getting only 58% of the carries that you had the previous year and ending up with around 50% of the yards and less than 50% of the touchdowns, one has to wonder whether your production against that MAC competition was just you outclassing the rest of the athletes on the field. And once he got to the Pac-12 type competition, he was no longer a bully. And the final weakness that I will point out is agility. He is a very stiff runner. He is a very stiff athlete. Now, this might contribute to some of his balance, but when you watch him on the field, there is not a whole lot of wiggle to him. Now, he doesn't try to deploy it, right? He does not try to juke players out. He does not try to east and west his way to the north and south end zone. What he does is take the ball, pick an angle, and run. So that's, that's at least he, he seems to know his limitations in that department.